Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter number 33. 3, 3. Exodus. Exodus. Exodus is in your Bible. Verse 12. Exodus 33 and 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you would send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found grace in my sight. Now therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation is your people. God said, my presence will go with you. I will give you rest. This is the key to all your stress and frustration. That's another time. Then Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. That's pretty audacious. For how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that I have spoken for you. For I have found, for you have found grace in my sight. And I know you by name. The theme for this month, this month of September, the month of presence, the month of manifestations, the month of bringing to birth all the things that you have incubated on the inside of you. Uh, this theme for this month is what I believe, I, I, I feel personally that it's one of the most compelling of all the themes that we are going to have through the 12th calendar year. Presence. Because I believe that in this theme, presence, somebody say presence, lies your secret to everything that is good, to everything that is needful, to everything, ladies and gentlemen, that is extraordinary in your life. It's in this thing called presence. This, I believe, is your master key to an unexplainable life. You see, I happen to have a particular key in this house, in this church. There are many doors. But I have one key that opens every door. I have it. It's with me. It goes everywhere, anywhere, anytime I want to go to. It is the master key in this house. People have keys in this house. But their keys can't go to other places. Because they are not master keys. They are personal keys. But divine presence is your master key. Oh, you are not getting me. I said it's your master key to a life. That nobody must be able to explain away. Hear me. If your enemies or your detractors can easily explain you without lying, then you are too ordinary. This is a good tweet. I said, if your enemies and your detractors can easily explain you without lying, then you are too ordinary. You see, you, you, you must so walk in blessing that people will go about saying that she's selling something illegal. Because they know that you don't do the kind of job they do. You don't have the degrees that they have. And somehow, at the end of the year, you have more money than them. At the end of the day, you are preferred over them and they can't understand. So all that they have to do is to lie about you. But what they will find out is that their lies also becomes a free advertisement... People must find it almost impossible to anticipate you as a child of God. And in order to walk in this, in order to walk in greatness in life, you must, what, you must have what I call secrets. Somebody say secrets. Say it again. Or keys. Say keys. One more time. Say two times. You must have keys. You see, secrets or keys are those that unlock places. That ordinary people cannot assess. It doesn't matter how formidable a barrier or a gate or a door is. 
if you have the right key and you realize that normally keys are smaller than the doors. <laughs> keys are smaller than the doors and yet no matter how huge the door is, no matter how fortified the door is, if you have the right key, you have access. So there is no barrier that stands before you this morning. There's no problem. There's no situation that hinders you this morning. That if you have the right key, you cannot assess and get your breakthrough. Is somebody hearing me? Ladies and gentlemen, he said in Isaiah chapter 45 and verse number 3, he said concerning Cyrus, he said, I will go before you to make the crooked places straight. And he said, I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Hear me, there are treasures, but they are covered in darkness. You don't have to struggle in life. Because before you were created, God had anticipated every need that you have. That is why he set everything in place for five days. And when he has seen that everything was okay, now he brought you and said, come and enjoy. So why are you struggling? Jesus said, go and compare all the people to come to my banquet. And when you go, tell them that come and eat for all things are ready. He has made things ready for you. But you are struggling because you are in darkness. May God give you light. I said, may God give you light. When God said, let there be light, he wasn't talking about this new light. He was talking about illumination. May your eyes open. He said, I will give to you the treasures of darkness. Hear me. No matter how desperately poor a nation is, there are still rich people there. And it's because those rich people have found keys to treasures. And he says, the hidden riches of secret, you must have secrets. When America was struggling with the recession, people made more money. More millionaires were born in America in the midst of the recession. Why? Because whilst others were crying luck, others were crying opportunity. That is what God gives you when you have keys. Job said, the great Job, the great, the great sage Job said in Job chapter 29, he said in the, in the King James Version, you can, you can give, but he said, as it was in the days of my youth, in the days of my prime, the new King James says that when the friendly counsel of God was over my tent. The King James version says that when the secret of the Lord was upon my tabernacle. When the secret of the Lord, in fact the psalmist says that the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. Which means God has secrets. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says that secret things belong to God. But the ones that are revealed are for him and his children. Which means God has some secrets that don't belong to everybody. Which means you can be in the kingdom and not have God's secrets. Listen, you must trade in secrets. The reason why KFC is different from Popeye, they tell you is that the secret is in the recipe. And they never show you the whole recipe, the whole secret, lest you duplicate what they have. So they are always at the cutting edge of fast food, wrong food. You get my point? <laughs> uh -huh. They are always at the cutting edge because they have a secret that is in the recipe. In the same way as a Christian, when you trade in secrets, nobody can explain you. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. I said when you trade in secrets, nobody. Great men, great women in the Bible traded in secrets. People couldn't understand them. And it's all because they honored God with his presence. They locked into the secrets to carry the presence of God. Hear me ladies and gentlemen, when you get this secret of divine presence, your struggles will cease. You didn't get me. There's, there are few leaders like Moses. A man lifted and trained by God. To lead his people out of Egyptian captivity to their pro promised land. And Moses had worked with God for years. He has seen mighty works. Red Sea had opened of his own accord. He has seen power demonstrations of deliverance. Whilst Egypt was losing their firstborns, their inheritance, theirs was secure. He has seen God do amazing things. They have seen miraculous provision. God feeding three million some people with, with food. That is called angel's food. They had no irrigation system and yet God gave them water. 
they had no air conditioning and yet God gave them air conditioning by day and central heating by night. God protected them. God did everything for them. In fact, they broke the back of the economy of Egypt and they've been camping at Mount Sinai and now it was time to move forward into their, into their promised land. And God said, when you begin, I, I, I pray that when you go home tonight, before you sleep, read the whole of Exodus 33. It's beautiful. And I'm going to unpack it through the, through, through the, through the days of this month. They had done some things and God said, you know what? You guys are stiff-necked people. And I am so holy, I'm so powerful that if I dwell amongst you, chances are that my holiness will break out against you and kill you. So I'm going to do a deal with you. I love you so much, so I'm going to give you a guardian angel. And that guardian angel will go ahead of you. Now, you have to understand that angels are powerful beings. One angel, one angel, one angel in the days of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, one angel fought for Hezekiah against the army of the Assyrians. And one night, one angel killed 185,000 soldiers of Assyria. So you don't mess with angels. And honestly, if God told me personally that Frank of Osopia, this is your personal dangerous angel, I'll start a new church, the church of the first angel. And I'll draw angels flying with swords. You know those things that you see on your Facebook with machetes and say, tonight enemies will die. Or some catapults and oppression, shoot them. That is my angel. <laughs> but you read it and can, can you give me Exodus 33 verse 4, please? I will, we want to make visual contact with this thing. Give me Exodus 33 verse 4. God said, I'm giving you an angel. I want to learn. I want to take my time to teach you. And when the people heard this bad news, they mourned and no one put on his ornaments. God says, I am giving you an angel. And instead of rejoicing, the Bible says, they said, this is bad news. Think about it. Which means they consider that there was something superior to angelic help. That there are some dimensions of life that you are going to walk that angelic help is not enough. Because angels like you and I are created beings. So they realize that we don't need a created being as such. Israel need, needed something superior. And they knew something that most of us in the body of Christ have no idea about. That there is no worthy and commensurate substitute for the presence of God. I didn't ask you to clap. So if you want to clap. The people said this is bad news. Can you imagine? God gives you an angel and you say no. This is bad news. Moses go and talk to him. And Moses the great leader. The great friend. The great intercessor. Goes to God and begins to engage with God. And when you read the prayers of Moses. It almost borders on the disrespectful. Moses was desperate. Moses determined that listen. This bad news won't go with us. No. Angels are powerful, but where you are taking us to, there's something that must supersede angels. And he said, Lord, I, I, I beg you, I want to be almost disrespectful. You know the condition of my heart, but Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, please, we are not moving one inch. We are not putting one foot ahead of the other. We are not settling for anything except your presence goes with us. This is something that you must lock in as a Christian, that God's presence must be your all. God's presence must be everything about you. Ladies and gentlemen, he knew that, he, Moses knew that if it was God's manifest presence that helped a bunch of slaves to break free from 430 years of captivity without any weapons. It wasn't their own accord. It wasn't their own smartness. It wasn't an angelic help. It was the presence of God that helped them break free from the most powerful empire. So there are some levels that God is going to take you in the days ahead that you need nothing short of the presence of God. And Moses said, listen, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, how would it be known that we have found grace in your sight? That word grace is the same word favor. How shall it be known? Listen, how would the people in, on your job, in your family, people who don't believe in you, know that you are not ordinary? How would they know that we, we have found grace? Listen, the Bible says, come with boldness. Hebrews 4.16, come with boldness to the throne of grace that you may obtain help, mercy and help in our time of need. So grace, favor is powerful and it is only found in the presence of God. 
He said, how shall he be known? Because 430 years of captivity and we are coming out in style, it has to take something different. Then he said again that, how would the nations know that we are separate? That we are not ordinary? How shall it be known? Listen, if you are going to walk in grace and you are going to walk as a standout, as extraordinary, you need the presence of God. Somebody say presence. You may ask me, but God is everywhere, so what is the deal? Let me unpack this because there are at least three basic aspects of God's presence that I want to explain. Number one, God is God. And he has some essential attributes of divinity, which means he alone carries those. No human being carries the essential attributes of God. You may manifest a little bit of it, but not all. Some of you have it. You will find out. And God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. Some of you think you are all-powerful until you get a migraine. Then that is your comeuppance. Then you understand what I mean. Yeah. He's all powerful. He's omnipotent. Once have God spoken to us, have I heard that all power belongs to God? He said, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He's all powerful. God alone is all powerful. Not political parties, not presidential candidates, not millionaires or billionaires, but God alone is all powerful. Then God, his essential attribute is that God is omniscient. That is, he knows everything. Just like some of you. Before the, <laughs> before the beginning began, God knew. That is why even before you were born, he said, before you, you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. He declares the end from the beginning, saying that my counsel shall stand. Which is before you thought about the thing, God knew the end. He's omniscient. And his third essential attribute is that God is omnipresent. Some of you two are like that. God is omnipresent on Facebook. You're omnipresent. You are everywhere. God is everywhere at the same time. Which means if you go to Washington, Seattle and Washington, God is there. You go to the deserts of Arizona, God is there. You go to the jungles of the Amazon, God is there. Everywhere that you go, he is present. And so you're asking, so what, what again? That is one attribute of the presence of God. He is everywhere at the same time. If I give me Psalm 139, and let, 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 verse number 7. Psalm 139 verse number 7. Let's, let's look at this. The psalmist said, where can I go from your, pres from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Which means everywhere you go, the presence of God is there. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Even in your hell, God is there. Not that he lives in there. And by the way, by the way, whilst we are at it, listen. Satan has never been in hell before. Keep looking at me. Keep staring. I said Satan has not been in hell before. I'm testing your theology. Some of you pray, say Satan, we send you back to hell. He has not been there. <laughs> Yet. Your Bible says that in the book of Revelation that the lake of fire will be created for the devil and his angels and he shall be cast there. It is after we have gone up that is when hell, ladies and gentlemen. So there's a difference. Satan hasn't been, there's Hades, the place of the departed. But when it comes to hell as in hell, no one has been there yet. Satan will go there and please don't go with him. Amen. Check your Bible. Don't look at me like, like that. That's why I'm here. That's why God called me for you. But he said, when I, make, when I make my bed, even in hell, please let's go and pick, give, give, it, give it back to me. Behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. You see, the psalmist was saying that there is no way. He says even darkness, darkness, even surely the darkness shall follow me. Even the night shall be light about me. You see, when God is everywhere, all he's saying is that nothing is hidden from the presence of God. So number one, God is omnipresent. Number two, there's also the indwelling presence of God. There's the indwelling presence of God. If you're a child of God and you have given your life to Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. 
Your spirit is born again. You are renewed. You are brand new. And he comes to indwell in. Jesus said that the spirit, the comforter will come and dwell and abide with you forever. He's there on the inside of you. You carry him about. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16. The apostle Paul said that, don't you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. I want you to say God dwells in me. Say it one more time. One more time. Can we shout it? I want you to understand that everywhere you go, you carry God on your inside. Amen. Everywhere. But there's a third aspect, and that is what we are dealing with, and that is his manifest presence. Yes, God is everywhere. Yes, God dwells on the inside of us. But there are special times and seasons and places when God reveals himself and some of his powerful attributes to humanity. That is what I call when God shows up and shows off. I said that is when God shows up and shows off. And let me pronounce it over somebody's head. That God is about to show up in a dimension in your life. Not only will he show up, but he will show off. God will throw his weight about for you. You have been trampled about, you have been threatened, you have been molested, you have been abused, you have been sidelined, but he is coming on your case. His divine presence is coming upon you. And when God stands up and when God shakes himself and when God shows himself on your behalf, ladies and gentlemen, people that used to look down on you will begin to have a healthy respect for you. People that thought there is no hope for you will begin to realize that they are dealing with something that is beyond the ordinary. If that is you, say yes. It is, the, it is the manifestation of God's rule and power in our lives and in our activities. When you read Exodus 33, like I told you, you will discover something very interesting. Moses, they, they were all living in tents. They had come out of captivity. They hadn't built houses yet because they were not home yet. And so they were all living in tents and all the tents looked the same. And because of all this hard-heartedness, Moses, the leader, decided, listen, I'm not going to let the people take me and my anointing for granted. Because familiarity deadens the anointing. So he took his tent. Moses took his tent. And he went outside the camp and pitched his tent outside and said, now, anybody who wants to seek God and me, travel outside the camp and go look for me. And the Bible says that every morning when Moses stood up and he started walking towards the, the tent, the whole nation stood up. They understood authority and respect for the anointed, except in America. They stood up. They honored leadership. And they watched Moses go into the tabernacle. And the Bible says that anytime Moses entered the tabernacle, the presence of God came and dwelt upon the tabernacle. You see, all the tents were different, were the same. But one, one was different because the presence of the Lord rested upon it. All of us may look the same. All of us may speak the same. All of us may walk the same. But when you carry the presence of God, ladies and gentlemen, there is something that is extraordinary about you that separates you from every other person. So let it be for you. Listen to me. When you carry the presence, ordinary places become places of power. When you carry the presence, places that you don't expect to see God are the places that you see God. Jacob left home as a refugee. He was tired. He was lonely. He was afraid. He was all by himself. At night, the man was so poor that his hotel was the open skies and he was poor that his pillow was a stone and Jacob laid his hands on the, uh, his head on the stone but that night, the presence of God came upon him and the Bible says that the heavens were opened uh, and Jacob saw a ladder coming from heaven and angels ascending and descending ascending and descending and when Jacob came to himself, he said surely the presence of the Lord was here and I didn't know it. Hear me, there are places that the presence of God shows up. It could be a wilderness. It could be nothing. But his presence shows up. And he says, how awesome is this place? And this surely is the house of God. You see, when God's presence is manifest, your wilderness becomes the house of God. Your place of nothing becomes a place of encounter. May you begin to walk in that presence. I say, may that presence come upon you. May God's presence change your life. Somebody agree with me? Say, amen. Hear me, your greatest asset as a Christian is divine presence. It's your key to everything that is powerful in this life. Amen.
Do you know that everything that you need is waiting for you in the presence of God? Waiting for you. You've looked high, you've looked low. You've consulted, you've trusted, you've begged, you've cajoled. But it's waiting for you in the presence of God. The psalmist said in Psalm 16 and verse number 11 that in the presence of God there's fullness of joy. You know why you are not joyful? You haven't gone to the right place. Your sleeping tablets won't give you joy. The alcohol will trouble you the day after. The morning after. In the night it will be champagne. But in the morning it will be the real pain. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about somebody else. Amen. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. May I suggest to you that you haven't gone to where your, 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 your results are. It's in the presence of God. Because when his presence is upon you, your struggles will meet their match. <laughs> I said your struggles will meet their match. And you enter into dimensions of the unexplainable. Show me a man, show me a woman who carries his presence and I'll show you an unbeatable person. Show me one man. Adam enjoyed presence in everything. So long as he was in God's presence in the garden, Adam had no need until he was banished. The Bible says Enoch walked with God and he cheated death. When everybody was expecting him to die because he was old, Enoch and God took a walk. And God said, see you later. I said, no, I'm coming with you. Presence took him. May you cheat death. I said, may you cheat death. May his presence exempt you from death. That is not necessary. You must grow and when you are tired, you go home. May I say something to you? How many of you have lost something in life before? Show me, show me. Be, be honest. You've lost something before. Did it hurt? Who be? But hear me. You haven't lost anything until you've lost the presence of God. You haven't lost anything until you have lost God's presence. I'm telling you, you can be a Christian and not carry it. He's in you. But that manifesting that you feel that makes you bold, courageous like a lion, you've lost it. And in one of our installments, I'll be teaching about how you can walk six ways that you can enter into that thing. That's not for tonight, today. But hear me, David has sinned with Bathsheba. He was powerful, he had palaces, he had power, he had everything. And when he was confronted by Nathan and he had sinned, David went back and wrote a prayer before God in Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to the multitude of mercies. Blot out my transgressions and sin to my mind. And, and he said something. He said, listen, do not, look at it. He said, no, shall we go to verse number something? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll tell you when I want it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ah. Wait, 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 wait. David said that do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit. Which means, Lord, you can keep Bathsheba. You can take the throne and the crown from me. You can collect anything that you gave to me. After all, I had nothing before you called me. And so I am nothing in spite of everything. And I've made some real boo-boos in this life. But there's one thing that I am asking from you. That Lord, please, after you have stripped me of everything, leave me with one thing. And that is your presence. Why? Because if you have the presence, you may have lost everything, but you recover all. May God help you today to recover everything because of the presence. David locked into a secret that, hey, I may lose anything, but because of the presence, I can gain everything. May that be your prayer in this life. Let people strip you of everything. Let people, I mean, sideline you. Let people take everything. But ladies and gentlemen, when you carry the presence, you will recover everything. Something cut too close to the parameters of his authority. And he began to mess up little by little. Nobody falls at once. 
He began to test it until it was too late. And Delilah troubled him. Judges 16. How, 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 why do you say you love me when you can't tell me your secret? I, I wish I could tabernacle here for a few minutes. But I'll move on for another day. You are never powerful in this life until you have a secret that is yours alone. And by the way, any secret between you and somebody is no secret. The only secret between you and somebody that is a secret is when that somebody is dead. And they died without telling. And what you think is a secret here is a scandal somewhere. They are talking about it. Because that friend can't keep their mouth shut. And every friend has a friend. Who has a friend? Who has a friend? Who has a friend? I didn't ask you to clap. So if you are clapping, clap well. Many of the things that you are hearing about you is the gospel according to the situation. Some of you talk too much. You can't keep anything. You tell me, well, I want to share my secret. Please don't tell anybody. You yourself couldn't keep it and you expect me to keep it. Tell somebody, keep your secret. You are never, listen. I have a question. Do you have a secret of covenant with God? Some of you, 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 you deal loosely with your Christian life. There are, listen, great men and great women don't come cheap. We don't appear to for a penny. You must have some covenants with God that you don't violate. Because a day will come, trust me, that all that you have left is the secret of your covenant with God. Where you will go to God and say, God, because of this thing, God, because of this thing between you and I, Lord, show up and show forth. I said, show up and show out for me. A time will come that you have to undress, ladies and gentlemen, forgive the crudeness of my terminology, and stand naked before your God at midnight and appeal to the secret and the source of your covenant and say, Lord, because of this, I want to ask you in this house, do you have a secret of a covenant with God? You are walking too loose. All you know is I receive it. Listen, you, you are lying to yourself. It is time to get deeper in God and search the deep things of God and let it be between you and God. Delilah says something. You are not an imposing figure, but something is about you that makes you destroy my people. What is the secret? And he said, let me tell you, let me, let me clue you. You see these seven locks. I'm not a Rastafarian for no reason. It's the secret of my covenant. And here, listen to what Samson said. He said, if you take, please go back, go back. Don't run like that, please. He said, if they bind me with fresh Boston, blah, blah, blah. Go ahead, go, 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 go. Go. He says, you've mocked me. You told me lies. Now, please tell me. Go ahead, go ahead. Now he's getting close. No, he started by lying, lying. Now he says, now my hair. He's getting close to the thing. Go ahead. Some of you think you are very strong until you discover that you are weak. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ha. She pestered him daily. Pestered. Sent texts. Facebook messages. Inbox. Timeline. WhatsApp. Why, honey? Prove it. You love me. You go on and your phone won't stop. You are working. Oh, it's her. And he's, she's pestering you. Lady, he's pestering you. And, and, and you, can't, you must be strong on your inside. You must be able to handle irritation. That is focus. That is a woman who is going somewhere to happen. Listen, if something that you hear, a little thing that you hear throws you off, you are very weak. Some of you can hear just one thing, one rumor about somebody and your whole Christian life is out of the window. You are weak. You have no backbone. She vexed him so that his soul was vexed to death. Now what happened? And he told her all in his heart and said, no razor has ever come upon my head. For I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb, from your mother's womb, Samson. And if you take off those hairs, then my strength will leave me and I shall be weak and be like any other man. Which means Samson, hear me Samson in this house and on television and radio, you are not ordinary. Look at somebody and tell the person you are not ordinary. You are not, listen, you are not like any other person. If you were ordinary, you would have died by now. 
Do you know how many people mark dates on their calendars? But you are still here. You are not ordinary. You may look ordinary, but you are not. If God gave you the eyes of your enemies, you will respect your own self today. And after the deal was done, give me verse 20. Give me verse 20. Let, let's finish it. And Delilah said, the Philistines are upon you. And Samson awoke from sleep and said, I will go out as before. At other times and shake myself free. But he did not know. Presence of God. One of the saddest statements. Anytime I read it. This is the most expensive haircut in history. Presence of God. Presence is departed. There's a danger that I'll talk to you about presence. You see, when you have been doing some things wrong on and on and on and on, and there has never been anything wrong with you, presence has departed. It's one of the signs that you are living in sin permanently. Nothing happens to you, you don't, you don't care. It's gone. But when the presence is there, it's small thing, the judgment of your heart troubles you. That is why people can sit in church. You sit in church in one ministry. Every day you are fighting. Every day, your energy drink is fight. No nice day. Every day, your face is squeezed. You, you laugh at home. You come to church to show us that you are angry. Something has departed. And you don't know. Because you have become, an, you, are, you are living in yesterday's anointing. You are yesterday's woman, yesterday's man. He said, I will do it like I used to do. But he didn't know that something was departed. And the sad thing is that he didn't know. Some of you joke. With the power that God has given to you. You are full of offense and you think it's normal. You are full of anger and bitterness and you think it's normal. Because listen, the Holy Spirit, his presence, is such a gentleman. And he says, I will not always strive with man. He won't strive with you. He won't force you. And so if you have the ability to be omnipotent by yourself, do it. But for those of us who are so needy, Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor people like us who know that it is not a degree that we have achieved or some money we have saved, but presence alone. In Christ alone I put my trust and I find my glory in the power of the cross. In all my victories let me dissolve of me that my sense of strength, my source of hope and my source of strength is in Christ alone. Where did you get your Christianity from? Small thing, small church. This one doesn't talk to this one. This one is angry with this one. I can't stand this one. I don't like the way you tie your tie. I don't like the color of your lipstick. And your selectors are too pointed. And uh, come on, come on, church. We are dealing with eternal issues of destiny. You want to break through. You want to be a heavyweight and you are spending your time doing paperweight exercises. You will be beaten in the arena of contention. Oh boy, my time is up, my time is up, my time is up. My time is up. Let's, let's consider, just, just write these things down. Let me take, may, may I take just about, well, you haven't had me for a while, so. Some of, some of the benefits that you can have when you carry the presence. Number one, Exodus 33 and 16. The first benefit is there. He said, if your presence does not go with us, how shall it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight? Go ahead. So that we shall be separate. So the first benefit is that you are not like any other person. Moses said that if your presence is not there, then we will look like anybody else. Then when I'm, what, whatever work I'm doing, anybody can take my job. But if your presence is with me, then I shall, that word separate means that I am, we shall be different. We shall stand out. We shall be distinguished. We shall be special. Hear me. Balaam was a wicked soothsayer who was hired by Bela, uh, Bela to go and curse the children of Israel in the book of Numbers 23. 
And this guy, the soothsayer, he, he wanted to curse the people. And he went over a mountain and he saw Israel, this same Israel, not too far from this scripture. And they were come by their multitudes in the valley. And the king said, I've brought you now, curse them. And when he looked over the mountains and he saw them, Numbers 23, give me verse number something. He said, from the mountains of the east, come and curse Jacob for me. Come and denounce Israel. And verse number eight, he said, how can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? And he said, from the top of the rocks, I see. do you know how many eyes are peering at you? From the top of the rocks, they are looking at you. They are looking at an occasion to curse you. They are looking at an occasion to dance on your grave. They are ready to use their last credit on their credit card to buy your wreath. And they want it to happen. And he said, I see him. And from the hills, I behold him. There are people dwelling alone. Not reckoning itself among the nations. Hear me. You are not like any ordinary person. When you carry the presence of God, ladies and gentlemen, you are distinguished, you are different, you are separated. Ladies and gentlemen, when divine presence is upon you, nobody can disrespect you successfully. Not making sense. Tell somebody I'm different. Tell somebody else I'm different. Listen, we live in America, we live in a fallen world, and people will judge you according to how they see you. But when the presence is upon you, you make waves. I say you make waves. Do you know how many people have come to sort us out, to check us out? And they can't explain? May you be unexplainable. The second benefit is in that same scripture. He said, if your presence does not go, how would they know that we have found grace in your sight? So the second one, write down favor. Because that word grace is the same word favor. Favor. You and I need favor. Unexplainable favor. People, we need favor. Somebody say favor. Listen. Can you imagine being a slave for 430 years? And one night you have the audacity to go to your captors and tell them, give me all your bank accounts. Give me all your money. Because in those days there were no banks. So gold and silver and clothing. And Moses told the people on the night that they were departing Egypt that you have worked for 430 years without pay. Tonight is payday. And the receipt to go and collect your pay is favor. And you walk to your master and say, Can, give me your gold. And the master said, oh, wait, I'll get everything. And they started collecting it for you. He said, how about the silver? They broke the economy and said, listen, I don't even want you to dress again when I'm gone. So give me your clothing. And they gave them all their best clothes, the Louis Vuittons, the, 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 what, what again, tell me, not Walmart, something. <laughs> Can somebody tell me something? What? Gucci. Prada, the devil wears it. What again? What? You name it. Can you imagine they gave everything? Why? Because the Bible says, for the Lord had given them favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. May God give you favor. I said, may God give you favor. Oh, somebody is not looking into this. I said, may God give you favor. Favor that will make people wonder because they think they know you. They do a better job than you. They carry more pay than you. And yet what you have is something they just cannot explain away. May God give us that favor. Is somebody hearing me? Because that favor will distinguish you. Can you imagine living home as a shepherd boy and when the convention, the conference for the next king was held in your father's house, you are not even invited. But somehow favor goes like, like, like an, a missile. And I, I, I see favor going like a missile all over the place. And favor locates one boy at the backside of the desert and out of a minute, one minute David was a shepherd boy and that favor carries him back to the place where he was rejected and says to someone, now anoint this one now may favor bring you from the back and put you in the front, wherever your application is, may God carry it from the back and bring it to the front, at the immigration, may he bring it from the back and put it in the front for you, at the bank, may he bring it from the back and bring it to the front on your job people are more qualified than you but may favor do some things that will make people wonder after you have occupied that office after you have gotten that thing may they come back and say how did you get it and tell them it is favor mm. 
Number three, number three, let me run. Number three, number three, number three. Preservation from enemies. When you carry their presence, I tell you, your enemies, look at Israel. They were, and in fact they still are, surrounded by formidable and sworn enemies. Please, go if you have some Bibles or whatever, you have, you have your lap. Listen, go to Bible geography and check where Israel is. Very dangerous, surrounded by enemies. In fact, part of Israel is in enemy's camp. Tel Aviv. All this, they are within striking distance of some terrible missiles. And yet nobody, Saudi Arabia with all their oil, Iraq, Iran, powerful neighbors can't touch this little nation. That sleeping giant, they can't touch them. There's no nation on earth that has produced more technology than that little nation. They don't have all the oil in the world. In fact, Israel is a desert. Part of it, David cursed it. You mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew or rain upon it. Nothing, and yet underneath that are trillions and trillions of cubic feet of gas. Presence. And you, are, you, you, you worry about where you were born. Who cares? Are you hearing me? Let me tell you something. No matter, Israel has been preserved and nobody can take Israel out. Do you know that there are dark, unseen forces that gather to seek to do you and I harm? Don't just sleep and say, ask for me, I don't trouble anybody. Huh? I agree, you don't trouble anybody, but won't anybody trouble you? Ask for me, I don't do bad. But bad will do you. You've got to understand that. You don't, don't, don't be naive. There are spirits that seek to, to, to uh, they have been hired to trouble you. But because of divine presence. In Exodus chapter 11, verse number 7, when darkness was upon the whole of Egypt, Israel was in Goshen. And what happened? The Bible says that none, but against none of the children of Israel shall a dog move. That was the day their children were going to die. But it says, you, you my people, not even a dog will move his tongue against man or beast. Go ahead. That you may know that I, the Lord, does make a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. May God make a difference between you and your enemies. I say, may God. Listen, do you know that when Israel left, when Israel, the Bible says that when Israel left Egypt, Egypt was glad because they left. Yeah. When you leave, wherever, your neighbor, when you buy a better house, a bigger house, or whatever, may your enemies say, at long last, they are gone. You are, not, you, are not, you are not a neighbor from hell, but you are troubling them because you come from Africa and you are, you are African-American and you are black and you are this and yet they can't figure you out. That is what presence does. I say, when, that is what presence does. May the Lord God Almighty preserve you. Number, number four is guidance. Guidance. Let me run. Guidance. Guidance. When the presence is with you, you have guidance. How many of you sometimes don't know which way to take? Honestly, we all struggle. I, I get there, you get there. But there's something in this life that you have to be very much aware. There are some wrong turns that you can't afford to make. They will cost you. They will cost you. You may recover, but you suffer. I kid you not. One of the blessings of modern day technology is the global positioning satellite, GPS, that you have in your car. They made it for people like me. When it comes to bearings, I'm the most challenged human being. When you say drive north, it's where is north? And what frustrates me, I don't know about you, is when they showed me a compass, say true north, true where? For all I know, the thing points anywhere. Anybody knows what I'm talking? Some of you have fought husbands and wives. Now you are smiling nicely because he was driving and he missed it. You say you, anything we say. How many of you know men? I don't want to remind you of your pain, but <laughs> anybody, all the ladies said, yeah. he said, why do you always like the long way? He said, how did he know? I, by revelation. <laughs> Divine knowledge. He said, this short distance, just go here, they will pass here. Then she's telling me, it's straight on, and I'm passing, who is he? Holy Spirit is telling me, move here. 
But GPS makes life a little bit easy for us. Unless the woman who speaks doesn't like you. Then she'll take you around. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But listen, sometimes wrong turns, you can't afford them. They cost you time. They cost you money. They can cost you energy. This is the job you've been looking for. They've asked you to come to the interview. And you made a wrong turn downtown. And it's a one-way road. And you've got to go back on the freeway and turn around. And you are going to walk into the... Uh, 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 you are panting like a dog in summer. Uh, uh, and the people look at you and say, uh, 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 no job, please. The, you, you know what I'm talking about. It can cost you, so you have to be accurate. And you know what? The presence of God gives you guidance. I said the presence of God gives you guidance. Exodus 13, verse 21 and 22. The Bible says, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire in a, pi a pillar of fire to give them light so god must lead you his presence must lead you to show you the way please hear me may may you be guided so you don't marry the wrong person uh, please don't say too long an amen don't say too long an amen come tone down your amen tone down your amen but may god guide you so that you don't collect the right, the wrong person some people have a historical pattern of attracting the wrong people all the time. Today is the end. I say today is the end. I don't care how sweet his words are. I don't care how much he looks connected. The car was rented. May the Lord guide you. I say some of these things but it's seriously prophetic. Seriously prophetic. I know that some of you, somebody here today after church, you are going to get a lift from your friend. Can you give, I don't want this car. I want, may the Lord help you. Number five, number five, number five, number five. I have three minutes, number five. The exploits, number five is exploits, exploits. The presence will make you achieve things that nobody in your bloodline has ever done before. I have been working on this platform and making some declarations. I'll make it again. You are the next big thing to happen in your family. I don't know why I, I, I am led along this line. I say you are the next big thing. You will do things that nobody in your bloodline has ever done. I say you will do things that nobody in your family has ever done. That is exploits. Somebody say exploits. I have a question for somebody here. How do you explain water coming out of rocks? How do you explain it? Water. Coming out of rocks to, 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 to quench the thirst of three million people. How do you explain it? How do you explain mountains and hills running away from the presence of a people? The Bible says that when Israel, Psalm 114, when Israel left Egypt, when they left a, a people of a strange language, the Bible says that Judah was a sanctuary. For Israel, Judah means praise. So anytime they praise, I remember when you praise, you create a presence for God. So when Israel left, they were praising. If you read Exodus 15, I will praise the Lord forever, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the chariot he has cast into the sea. The Lord is a, the Lord of war. The, 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 the Lord is a man of war, and the Lord is his name. And the horse and the chariot, and Pharaoh is cast into the sea. And he goes and talks about they were they were praising God, and the presence was with them. And the Bible says that as they were praising, the mountains saw them and the mountains turned aside. The hills saw them and the hills kept. The Red Sea, the sea saw them and the sea ran away. And the Jordan saw them and the Jordan turned aside. And a voice came and said, what is troubling you mountain and hills and sea that you are running away without Taodo? And they said, listen, it is at the presence of God Almighty. That is why we are running. May every mountain before you run away. I said, may every mountain run away. Hey, I said, may every mountain run away. Whatever is chasing you, may it run away in the name of the Lord Jesus. Everybody that is tormenting you either by Facebook or by WhatsApp or by phone calls or by text as you come in the presence of the Lord may they run away chase them in the name of the Lord may the presence of the Lord chase them may they run like a dog with a tail between them hey, I, I said I am making a declaration I said how do you explain the Bible says that when there were a few in number when they traveled from nation to nation, he never allowed anyone to do them wrong. He rebuked kings for their sake. And he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. 
Why? Because the presence was with them. May nobody touch you without God rebuking them. I said, may nobody touch you without God speaking on your behalf. May his presence stand and fight for you. Do exploits. I said, do exploits. Bring water out of rocks. Turn enemies, enemy armies into flight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. One person who carried the presence, Samson, he made life hell for the Philistines. May you make life hell for your enemies. Last one. I have plenty. Last one. Which one should I choose? No. Strength of your body. When you have the presence, God gives you strength. The Bible says that as they traveled and the presence was with them, not one of them was feeble or weak in the journey. Sometimes sickness and disease and infirmity tries to trouble us and worry us. But when the presence is strong on us, may every sickness, may every disease, some people carry diseases that have not manifested yet. May they die unborn under the finger of God. I say may they die unborn under the finger of God. Sometimes people discover they are sick and it is too late. But with you, you shall not even make a discovery because the presence of God will kill it before he kill it. This is my last statement. If there's anything this year or this month that you must endeavor to get and after you get it, you must keep it. It's the presence. My name still remains Franco Fosuapia and I approve this message.